Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, another competitively oriented set of gameplay matches for you guys, this time with Fluffles utilizing the OCG import of Fright for Patchwork to us in the TCG in Soul Fusion. Now, this is a card that I've been waiting on a while, and I'm not even an avid Fluffle fan or avid Fluffle player. I can only imagine how much the Fluffle players wanted this card to come in to the TCG, considering that, like, we could have gotten it imported in 2017 in Fusion Enforcers, but we apparently just didn't deserve it then, even though the entirety of a third of that set's core cards were Fluffle reprints. Don't quite understand it, but anyway, this card is coming to us in the TCG in Soul Fusion. It definitely bolsters this strategy, the Fluffle strategy, quite a bit. This is just one of my test builds that I've been running around with testing. Uh, I've built it to play against, you know, the predominant deck in the format, which is like Sky Striker. You really don't want to be playing things like Ash Blossom and stuff like that in your main deck if you're trying to make trades with a deck like Sky Striker. Uh, because, like, why would you Ash Blossom and Engage when you could just Twin Twister their back row or Hey True Nade all of their Widow Anchors and stuff that they're getting with those Engages and then potentially kill them with your Sabertooth Tiger plays and stuff like that. So that's why the deck is built the way it is. It is simply a testing bed. I may reverse that decision. Who knows? Hey True Nade may turn out to suck, uh, as it definitely sort of does in the matchup that is going to be played out in this video. Uh, unfortunately, Hey True Nade does not do that well against Altergeist because a lot of the cards that they are triggering are just cards that can either be left continuous on the field or are just traps that they're okay just throwing away in the face of a Hey True Nade just to trigger their multi faker and then you're playing through that. So a lot of problems present themselves in this specific matchup, but I do want to sort of explore the Fluffle Dex matchups across the board against Goki, against Sky Striker, against Altergeist, against True Draco, a little bit more like the Roger strategies because this is a going second combo deck. It's a deck that blinds second every single time and those are very unique in Yu-Gi-Oh! in terms of they don't pop up very often and they're either relevant or they're not. It's one of those things where it's either going to be good enough for a weekend or something like uh, like Mermails was at one point when Neptibus came out or it's just not going to be something that's relevant. But so that's what I wanted to do for this video and for a few subsequent videos is just to also test this theme out because I haven't played with it a lot but I do really enjoy the aesthetic and the design of the theme so it's one of those things that I could easily get behind and play uh, and if you guys have any suggestions for any fluffle uh, advice or decks that you could point me in a direction of uh, I would definitely be sort of all ears you could definitely relay to that to me in my discord which is linked down below but other than that let's just jump straight into some uh, some gameplay shall we Alright, so going into the first game, this is a blind going second combo deck, so I'm obviously going to be going second whether or not I win Rock, Paper, Scissors. But so I'm playing against Altergeist, uh, and it's pretty hard. This matchup is pretty hard. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is a very touch-and-go matchup for a lot of other rogue decks, and a lot of meta decks as well. Altergeist is a very unique matchup in how it plays, because it is a trap deck that has really potent monsters that can make use of the fact that a lot of your traps are just like not super value based in certain instances the monsters like multi faker um, and marionette are sort of just really make up for that uh, but so I'm not able to do anything <laughs> as you can see uh, my opponent set up a protocol and skill drain protocol meaning that all of his altergeist activated effects will still activate and resolve under skill drain because protocols first line of text is the activated effects of your Altergeist monsters cannot be negated. So that protocol there makes that skill drain pretty much one-sided for me. It means the continuous effects of his Altergeist monsters are going to be negated, like Hextia's attack boost and stuff like that. Um, Meloseek's ability to attack directly, those sort of minor details. But basically, he's able to activate his multi-faker, activate his silk, activate Hextia's effect to negate, uh, trigger Meloseek if it uh, deals damage to me to send cards. Uh, so I'm dealing with a one-sided skill drain, and the the floodgates just keep piling up in terms of like he just keeps resolving his multi faker turn after turn after turn to start stepping up into Hextias. He's being very very frugal with how he's using that manifestation, flipping it, targeting a card, and then shuffling it back into his deck off personal spoofing before the monster summons because it doesn't have to equip, it doesn't have to stay on the field and equip to the monster to summon the monster. So if it leaves the field, the monster gets summoned and it's not tied to it. So he's just continuously putting it back into his deck, getting Marionetter, then to immediately get the Manifestation back out of his deck again. 
um, and I'm dealing with like an Imperial Order, a skill drain that's one-sided because of his protocol, and he just keeps putting monsters onto the field for free because of the interaction that Manifestation, Multifaker, and Personal Spoofing have around each other. So, he's being a very, very smart with his plays, uh, being very aggressive with how the deck can play as well. Like, he's definitely one of the more aggressive Altergeist players that I know that plays this deck on a regular basis. Like, he's capable of just seeing exactly what needs to happen in terms of, like, putting the most pressure with the monsters, because that's something a lot of Altergeist players don't seem to really do. I've touched on this in previous videos playing against Altergeist, is that a lot of Altergeist players will just be very slow, and they'll be like, I just want my traps to do all the work, whereas the better Altergeist players that are doing well with the deck have committed the time to know how to turn their monsters into the oppressive force that they need to be to actually put your opponent on a clock. Um, whereas, like, if you're just sitting behind traps and just barely doing anything, like resolving multi-faker once, once every two turns or once every three turns, which is the pace that some of the like less experienced Altergeist players will do, then you put your opponent in a a larger uh, ability to a larger ability range to come back because you're giving them more turns. Uh, whereas if you're playing against someone who knows how to just start stepping up into Hextias um, and like resolving multi-faker literally every turn of the game, then it starts getting really out of hand. Which is uh, what's going on here, as you see. Um, I opened with a Twin Twister, but I got locked under a Secret Village of the Spellcasters, so there wasn't really much I could do about that. Uh, there's not really much I can do about the entirety of this situation, so... Secret Village of the Spellcasters obviously being a very, very defining card in this matchup as well, which is something that you don't really have to worry about in the Striker or the True Draco or other back row deck matchups. Like I said, Altergeist, the matchup with Altergeist with other rogue decks is very, very unique, but so... I got 2 0 for the first match, so going into the next match, we start with some unsighted games. I open with Hey Trunade. My opponent opens rather weak with only uh, just like a handful of monsters. His cherries doesn't really have a good target. Uh, in my deck, he could easily like hit like a Nightmare um, if he like wants like Nightmare Phoenix to not be a problem because obviously those are like standard cards that I would play. Uh, but his, his extra deck is loaded full of cherries targets, of which I play none of. In terms of like summon sorceress, is old firewall, like double helix stuff like that. But so he opens pretty weak. The hey trunade, even trying to hey trunade for one, he just flips spoofing, uh, and I'm just able to like at least try to play through it because of the fact that like it's just a really weak opening. I'm able to just get into the board and just start doing what I want to do, being able to finish it off with a fright for fusion for a wolf that has four attacks on it, and then I also just have a crack and this just chilling. So that's cool. So. I'm able to at least win game ones when my opponent opens rather weakly. Uh, like, I don't think I could have won that game if I was even having to play through one additional trap card. Um, it's actually that serious. I don't think this deck can win game ones blinding second against Altergeist against that matchup at all. And then the sided games are super, super RNG. For, uh, for like, did I open Red Reboot? Did I get Evenly? Did I get to Twin Twister? And does my opponent have Secret Village up? Stuff like that. But so, as you can see in this game, I had to Red Reboot. I had Red Reboot for a Solemn Strike, and then he flipped Solemn Judgment. He opened the Judgment for the Reboot. And I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> well, no, we're definitely not winning this one. Um, and the thing is, is that, like, I could have probably played my hand a bit differently to play around cards a bit better had I not just... I went into the play under the assumption that Red Reboot was just going to literally make it to where all of my plays were going through. In no way, shape, or form was I respecting that my opponent had the one of Solemn Judgment to be the counter. Literally the one card in his deck that counters Red Reboot. Did not think that it was going to be the thing that I saw. But so going into the third game of this match, I open Twin Twister evenly. I start with Twin Twister, uh, discarding Toy Vendor, which is an insane interaction. And my opponent chains uh, his personal spoofing, uses it and puts his uh, his uh, multi-faker on the field. Doesn't play around evenly matched at all, um, which is very weird. Normally, he plays around that card a lot, but he just didn't in this instance. I'm very unsure why. I guess maybe he just th didn't think that I sided it, because this is the first time he's seen it in my deck in our testing sessions, but he has seen Red Reboot thus far, so maybe he was thinking that he needs to just go ahead and drop this multi-faker and use it uh, right away because he got lucky and I didn't play Red Reboot or I didn't have the Red Reboot and I could possibly draw into it later or something. Unsure, but so, at this point the game state is pretty simplified. He kept the Multifaker so that if the Multifaker dies he could draw into Marionetta um, and, or like, uh, or Meloseek to get into a Marionetta and then like be able to start bringing it back and getting advantage back. Uh, but he just keeps drawing into trap cards. So he draws into a rivalry, sets it, flips it, which does keep me from killing him. 
draws into a Psalm Judgment, I draw into a Reboot, which I then set. He then draws into a Manifestation, which he tries to Manifestation on his Multifaker. I try to flip my Reboot, and then he has the Judgment for the Reboot a second time in these games. Uh, so it's just like, how? How do you have the one of? But it's fine, because him getting Silk from his deck and bouncing a card does not prevent me from gaming him because of how low he is in life. If he had been higher in life, that would have been a bit of a problem for me to deal with because it would have been harder for me to uh, to do anything about it. It would have been one of those things where uh, he would have had turns to come back. But so, going into the third and final match that we played, I'm going second yet again. Doesn't matter who won Rock, Paper, Scissors. I think that I won this game of Rock, Paper, Scissors and I just chose to go second. Like, this is a going second deck. You're not going to go first because this deck has zero plays going first and it definitely has no plays going first against Alter Guys. There's nothing that you want in your deck against, or there's nothing that your deck can do to make a turn one board against Alter Guys because they'll just summon Mellow Seek and attack and they'll just go, haha, got you. Uh, but so. This is a game one. Game ones are fairly unwinnable unless your opponent opens very weak. Um, he obviously did not. He has a rivalry and he's stepping up into Hextias, um, getting multi-faker, doing all this sort of stuff. Uh, Solemn Strike on my bear to then allow him to drop multi-faker, which allows him to put Melisique from deck under the Hextia manifestation for the Silk. And then he can just loop the uh, the manifestation because he can just bounce the manifestation, which will kill the silk. That meaning that means that uh, like he can just keep reviving it uh, over and over again. But he's able to step up into multiple hextias here uh, and do a lot of stuff. Now that was a very smart play. I don't know if you caught it. He used the spoofing to put the manifestation that he bounced to his hand back into his deck to add marionetter and then normal summon marionetter and then got the manifestation just right back from his deck into a spell and trap card zone. Those are the kind of like value trades that you want to make or like not even the value trades it's just like it's just rotating your resources around in the most economical way possible for what you have because he's getting the manifestation back anyway but now he has a 1600 beater that's also fueling his hextias to get bigger uh so stuff like that but so i lost that game very clearly it was a game one I, like i'm not able to win game ones when i draw hey trunade as well because like Hey, Trunade's just not that good in this matchup uh, because, again, he just, every time we've seen Hey, Trunade in this matchup, it just gets the cards that are face down just get flipped, and like it's a spoofing, which gets a multi faker, which gets special, or multi faker's already there, or whatever. But so from here, uh, I'm able to just uh, go into this game and try to simplify the game state as much as possible. My opponent has a lot of his monsters in his hand, which ends up working to my favor. He goes for a spoofing play to shuffle a card back into his deck, even though he already has the multi faker. Uh, I think he was just getting greedy, and I just had top decked the Twin Twister, or maybe it was just because he thought it was safe. Um, but I top decked Twin Twister, and so I chained Twin Twister on his spoofing and his protocol. He does still drop Multi Faker. I'm able to fright for Fusion for my second Tiger to bait out the Silquidus and pop his entire board again. The problem here, though, is that on top of my Banish Pile, you might have just saw was my Edge Imp Saber. It's the only one that I run in my deck. So at this point, the game state is pretty simplified. Uh, I've just discarded Polly to make my Seraph Knight big and attack and do all that sort of stuff and I've drawn a bunch of cards But I have no access to any Edge Imp monsters. I don't I haven't drawn fusion recovery My Edge Imp Sabers is banished because I needed to use Fright for Fusion for that play to bait the Silk without using my battle phase um, And like it just it became a problem, but so my opponent has a lot of his monsters out of his deck at this point a lot of them uh, a very significant portion of them are just out of his deck at this point, but I'm able to sneak this win with Boral Sword. Chaining Boral Sword's effect to switch his uh, multi-faker to defense mode in response to the Kunkery, that way it gains a second attack and that cannot be taken away because that's that's not an effect giving it a second attack, it's just like you get to attack twice. Um, is like the way that's that's worded. Like the, it's a game state recognition thing, not an effect thing. So even though its effect got negated, it's still capable of attacking twice. So it just attacks into the Hextia and does the damage for game. So next game, uh, very interesting. Uh, I actually don't understand how this one worked out in my favor so well. He opens Secret Village, and I have a Twin Twister in my hand, and I have Red Reboot, right? But so he flips over a trap and gets Red Rebooted <laughs> instead of just playing around it. Um, like he could have easily just he could have played around the red reboot to a degree of at least keeping the secret village alive, but instead he just like didn't. Or he could have flipped the protocol, attempt to flip the protocol in the standby phase, right? To special Mary, uh, the multi faker out of my of his hand, but it would obviously get red rebooted in response to the protocol. But at least then he's not tributing the silk because 
when he waited to activate that protocol on my Fluffle Dog effect, it meant that he was forced to tribute the monster, which then turned off Secret Village. So Red Reboot just turned off Secret Village and <laughs> put him under Red Reboot, and then I'm just able to kill him. So that one was a very weird one, but I mean, it's this matchup, like I said, is very, very touch and go. It's very, it's very RNG based, based off whether you draw your side deck cards. Uh, whether you can open Twin Twister game one is a huge thing as well. And then, like, you have to open Twin Twister and hit the right cards and then also have to be able to uh, play through the Silquitus, uh, the Silquitus bounce, which you can usually force with, like, Fright for Tiger. But, like, other than that, like, it's pretty it's pretty difficult sometimes. Sometimes it gets pretty hard. Sometimes it gets pretty wild. But So that is basically what I wanted to show you for this video. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to be until the next Fluffle video uh, because like it's uh, it's something that I could do immediately if I have access to a friend that's capable of playing Sky Strikers well enough for a video and in a, enough of a quantity for video or it's gonna be one of those things that takes a little bit of time but anyway like I said if you guys have any uh, any like Fluffle knowledge that's not terrible let me know uh, because like this this doesn't look too different from what I've seen online in most places in terms of lists but I could just be terribly wrong, but anyway, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below as always. Suggestions, positive comments, and all that stuff are always welcome. Subscribe if you're new here and you want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content, I'd be happy to have you on board. And like the video if you want to see more content like this and of this style. If you want to watch my streams, which happen semi-frequently, you know, a couple times a week, then there's a link to my Twitch page in the description down below. Go to that, follow the page, and you'll get notified next time I go live. As well as if you want to join the channel's public Discord server, or private or public I don't even know the channels discord server right if you want to join that <laughs> link to that is in the description down below as well so if you want to chat some shit chat about Yu-Gi-Oh discuss decks and all that sort of stuff with me and a bunch of other like-minded people then that is a place for you to be that you would probably enjoy but other than that as I've already said thanks for watching thanks for your time as usual guys and take care I'll see you in the next video